Oh, hi. Welcome to my sneak room. Today, on R&B Reptiles Presents, I'm going to talk to you about anthill pythons. Stay tuned. I'm going to talk to you about some anthills. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. An expert. All right, so I'm gonna do the. So you want me to do the the ant hills? Yeah, man. Do that. Do the ant hills. So these things are so nice and easy and gentle. They're only like 18 inches long. Make sure you use mm -hmm. that super huge. This is a really big hook because you got it because they're really scary. These things get real crazy. That's one of the. <laughs> this one's not uh, coming up. This huge snake that we have here. Hello. Hi. Gonna pull you out. Mmm, so scary. Mm. Come here. <laughs> I don't know anything about these. I don't know why you have me doing this. <laughs> You're a professional. I'm a professional. That I'm gonna let you do it. All right, I'll do it. All right, so I know Ben was joking around earlier about needing to use a big snake hook for these pygmy pythons. They are like 18 inch long little snakes, but one thing that, that you can know about them is that they think everything is food. So if you don't want to donate blood, pick them up with a hook first so they realize it's not feeding time. They are excellent eaters, these guys. When they're adults. When they're adults. We'll talk about that. So this is an adult male pygmy python. They come from Western Australia. They're very cool, smallest python in the world. Um, like I said, this is the adult size when they hatch out. Actually, I have a few hatchlings right here. So, as a size comparison, <laughs> you have baby, that's what, a month or two old, something, three months? A three month old baby. Um, and this, this is what, 2015, I think? Yes, 2015, so full grown adult. Um, in the wild, they will eat small lizards, especially to start out. So one thing I do want to talk about is if you get a baby or if you breed pygmy pythons, they can be very difficult to start. Um, so if you're looking to buy one and you've never dealt with, uh, either that or like uh, baby green tree pythons or like some other like difficult species to start make sure it's well started feeding off the tongs from frozen thawed prey or you're probably gonna have a real hard time um, for the first several months of their life you have to force and assist feed them parts of frozen thawed mice very small parts like forearms um, eventually they'll start getting the hint that that's food and you'll be able to drop it in there and they'll eat it on their own that's the stage that these guys are at now basically just take a part of a rat, uh, mouse leg drop it in there next day it's gone um, but they're very shy at this size obviously they're super small everything's trying to eat them right so they're just like scary um, once they get some size they kind of lose that you know shyness um, and they will then start striking at prey that you dangle on Tongs, but you know, for a little bit, it's, it's there's a learning curve for them. Um, but anyway, these are very easy to keep. We keep them just like we keep our bull pythons, just in a smaller enclosure. These guys probably should go up to a 28 quart. Um, and we're doing some rearranging in the room right now, so they will get moved up. But um, 28 quart is going to be where they are as an adult and stay for the rest of their lives. Um, they'll be in a hatchling rack for the first few years of their lives. Um, keep them at 90 degree hot spot, 80 degree ambient. Um, you know, a lot of humidity isn't necessary. Uh, 40, 50% is probably fine. <laughs> so when I first got these, this was a dream species of mine. And Ben was like, yeah, let's get them. So we got them, that was cool. Anyway, put them in these racks. And as you can see, there's small gaps at the top. Very small. Well, they got out. 
the very night they put them in there, I went in to check on them a little later, and they were gone. And uh, fortunately, it was only one of them was gone. The rest were still in there. I moved them out, and then I stalked the room at night for, what was it, four or five days straight, trying to catch this thing. Luckily, I found it on heat vent, right as it, like, there's a little hole where the pipe goes in for the water. Uh, so I got real lucky and was able to catch it before it disappeared into the walls, but uh, it was a little sketchy, so be careful. Make sure you have a snug fit on your enclosure. Um, feed them once a week, frozen thawed, mice, rats, whatever you can. They don't care. Um, what else? Ah, so they'll do small clutches. That they can have between five and 10 eggs, depending on their size. One thing that we did find out that's interesting is they usually hatch like somewhere around day 40, which is real weird. Um, I'm expecting them to incubate for 60 days, going in there, checking on eggs in the incubator, and 20 days early, these guys have heads popping out. So that was pretty cool to find out. Immediately called up some Australian buddies of ours. And I was like, what's going on? And they're like, oh yeah, <laughs> like common knowledge over there, but here nobody had ever mentioned it. So it was, Kind of worrisome and exciting at the same time, but um, super high metabolism. Um, one of the things that we didn't know to begin with when we first produced our first clutch of these was how quickly you need to start getting them eating. And I didn't want to force feed them. They're very small and delicate looking. So I was nervous. I let them go weeks and weeks and weeks trying to get them to eat on their own. It wouldn't. Eventually I started doing the force feeding, but at that point, it was too late and we lost the first clutch that we had. I later found out through some conversations we had with some people that we know in Australia that you gotta get them feed in before their first shed. Uh, super important to get food in them because they're just gonna burn through their body fat like crazy. I can only imagine that's due to the region that they're in. Maybe there's higher temperatures, I don't know. I'm just guessing really on that one, but um, yeah, get them feed in before the first shed. Don't wait six weeks like I did. Um, but once you get them going, they're really hardy. These guys will eat anything you put in the cage. They breed every year. Never had a problem with them. Very interesting animal, beautiful reds. Got this kind of blotchy, dark reds. They can vary in color from brown to the really high red ones. We have a couple of them that are, in fact, I'll probably show you one real quick. It's higher red. Sort of looks like the other one, but what I wanted to show you is way more red. Watch. Oh, you're being very good. Good for you. Sometimes they frill strike and wrap up the hook. Yeah. Because they want to eat everything, but once you get them out, they're fine. These ones are a year younger, 2016s. Um, Surprised, I haven't really like tried to like power feed these things. Um, this is actually, this this snake will produce eggs. This is breeding size. Uh, so it's pretty cool when you see a mom like this coiled around a clutch of eggs that's like, you know, smaller than the size of like a muffin. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But um, yeah, very interesting species. Easy to keep once they're established. Um, you know, price range on these things, they're pretty rare in the US. I'd probably say they were like $900 a piece, maybe a thousand, maybe 1200. Depends. Um, if you, you can find them available. If you can find them, that's the whole thing. There's not a lot of people working with them. If they are, most of them are keeping it a secret. They're trading or selling with their friends. And, and honestly, you know, when you have to take four or five months of hand feeding an animal to get it actually established, it's a lot of work, so it's worth the money. You know, don't buy them straight out of the egg, but a good keeper that has put the time into it to make sure it's nice and healthy for you is worth the way you want to go for sure. There you go, anthill pythons, pygmy pythons, Antaresia pythensis is the Latin name, and they're awesome little dwarf python species from Australia, smallest one in the world. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. It's been hey, great man. seeing I'll you. I'll scratch my arm. Cool, I'll do it again. Scratch your arm. Close.
Thank you so much for joining us this week, guys. Uh, wow. <laughs> my nipple. Hey, all the times you've been doing stuff to me lately. You asked me to do it. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we put up a video. Also, if you have any questions about the species we've been talking about, since they're kind of rare and not talked about a lot in videos, uh, and you're interested in getting involved with them, please drop a comment down below. We're more than happy to help you. Or message us. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and on my cell phone or Messenger or something. 3 a.m. <laughs> That happens. So, thanks guys. See ya. We're back. I don't know what to say anymore. No, just we're back and do it. So this, no. All right guys, no. We're back. Hey, everybody. What up? What are you doing? Get up.